Praise the King. Welcome to your Way Happy Bible Study. I'm Lisa Dennis Sparks, and you're watching Christians United Broadcasting Network, CUBN, where we want to see you be encouraged in Jesus' name. Hi, guys. Wonderful to see you. Um, let's get right straight into our study. Now, I know I probably should explain to you guys, I'm not here on a regular basis at this time because I have a lot of interesting family things going on um, with my parents and my kids and things like that where they need me but I'm gonna be here when I can okay we're not giving up doing the show forever we're going to you know I'm, I'm needing some time off quite a bit here lately uh, and that may continue until God decides different but Today, I was able to say, hey, I can do the show today. So we're going to do it. And um, I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know about next week. We're just taking it one day at a time to see how, you know, if it's the Lord's will or not. And when it is, we'll do it. And when it's not, we won't. And that's how it works. We're picking up our study in Proverbs chapter 28. And verse one, are you ready? The wicked flee when no man pursueth because they're a bunch of cowards. Okay. <laughs> but the righteous are bold as a lion. When you are walking with Jesus Christ, you can be bold as a lion. You have absolutely nothing to fear. According to the word. The righteous can be bold as a lion, but the wicked flee even when nobody's chasing them. Okay, they're just a bunch of flipping cowards. That's how it works. In verse two, for the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. Now, these are princes like Satan is the prince of the power of the air, like Gabriel fought the prince of Persia, which was an angel that was assigned to the territory of Persia, but was above it. And so Gabriel fought with the prince of Persia in the second heaven, which would be space. So it's saying for the transgression of a land. So the more transgressions there are, the more evil princes there are or good princes in the other, on the other end of the spectrum. So for the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. And these princes are those angels. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. So if you have, if you have someone in that territory, who is a man of understanding and knowledge, the state of that territory shall be prolonged and somewhat preserved. 
Because remember, it's kind of like with Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham asked the Lord, will you wipe it out for the sake of 10? He said, for 10, I will not destroy it. Okay. So even if you have a very small number in a land where transgressions are great, those who do have understanding and knowledge can actually prolong and preserve the existence of that land. Okay. In verse three, a poor man that oppresseth the poor, a poor, someone poor oppressing the poor is like a sweeping rain, which leaveth no food. So it, a poor man that oppresses the poor, that's, it's like he's shooting himself in the foot. It's like he's uh, hurting his self in a lot of ways. But it says that that's like a sweeping rain, which leaveth no food. The rain comes to make the food grow. But if a rain, a sweeping rain comes and carries all the food away, uh, it's just pointless. So uh, a poor man that oppresses the poor um, actually hurts the poor and hurts himself. Okay. In verse four, they that forsake the law praise the wicked. So those who defy and forsake the law that God has established. Okay. They praise the wicked. And have you noticed that it, you've got all these, um, these people out there, a lot of liberals, especially that they praise the wicked. They lift up those that are doing wickedness and they are attempting to circumvent laws that God has established. It says, they that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. So those of us who keep God's law and we trust in him, we stand against those kind of things in the ways that God leads us to do so. In verse five, evil men understand not judgment. They're clueless. <laughs> okay. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. Unless you are seeking the Lord, you're not going to have a clue as to what your actual situation is around you and why you're here who you are, what you are, where you are, why you're here, and where you're going. Those will be mysteries to you, unanswered questions, unless you are seeking the Lord, and he gives you understanding. So evil men understand not judgment. They, do, they don't even consider it. Um, but they, they that seek the Lord understand all things. Because understanding is one of the seven spirits of God. They are before the throne. They are shown to us in Revelation 1, 4. And they're named for, a, uh, they're named for us in Isaiah 11, 2. The seven spirits of the Lord. These are things that God must give to you specifically or you will not have them. Like wisdom, knowledge, um, understanding, counsel, might. The fear of the Lord. These are all the, the spirits before the throne of God. In verse 6, better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. You remember what perverse means? Let's look it up again and remind ourselves of what perverse means. The definition Yes, I need to clean this computer out. It's just slow as molasses. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Perverse. Showing a deliberate and obstinate desire to behave in a way that is unreasonable or unacceptable. Often in spite of the consequences. So, Someone who is perverse, as this scripture is saying, better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness. So 
you know, we may be poor, but we're following God and we're doing our best to obey him. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways. And that is, they show a deliberate and obstinate, that's stubborn, desire to behave in a way that is unreasonable or unacceptable, often in spite of the consequences. So someone who thinks like that, even though they are, they, and they may be rich, it's better to be poor and walk in uprightness with the Lord. In verse seven, whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. If you are uh, keeping the law, you are not giving your parents nor your father in heaven any reason to be ashamed of you. But if you are a companion of riotous men, um, that's people who are looking for trouble. They want to destroy property. They want to commit vandalism. They want to carry weapons. They want to steal and kill and destroy. Um, just being in the company of someone like that is going to be a shame to your parents because let's say the police pull you over and you are hanging out with somebody who has drugs and weapons and things like that in the car, you're going to prison too, just for being with them. And that has happened to a lot of people. So be very, very careful who you associate with, who you get into a car with, because they are going to take you down with them. If you are hanging out with them and things happen. Okay. In verse eight, he that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Now he's saying he that by usury, that is interest charged on loans. See, the Bible tells you, tells believers, you lend without usury. You lend without charging them interest. He that by usury and unjust gain, see usury and unjust gain go hand in hand. Interest is an, uh, is an unjust gain, the way it's used. So he that by interest and unjust gain increaseth his substance. If someone is charging interest, and a lot of them just are exorbitant, ridiculous rates that they'll charge. Um, and their gain is through unjust gain, increasing their substance by unjust gain. It says he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. He's gathering it, but God is going to take it away from him and he's going to give it to somebody who's going to distribute it. In verse nine, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. If you despise God's word and God's law, then don't even bother to pray. You're wasting your time. It will not, your prayer will not bear any fruit at, at all because those who hate God, hate his law, hate his word. Why would they turn to him if they hate him in prayer? Why would they? In verse 10, whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. Now, what this is saying, you know, we can cause our brother to stumble, but we cannot cause him to fall. God does not permit that. The children of God will not perish and not be compromised um, salvation wise by being led into captivity. So there's a lot of children of God out there who give a really, really good impression of a tear. Okay. <laughs> 
they have been raised in a world that teaches them to do evil. Okay. Now they're born with the temple of God inside them, but they do evil because they're raised in a world that teaches that doing evil is the only way to get ahead. Okay. So even the children of God are doing evil, but Jesus died for them from their first breath to their last. So even though they may give a very good impression of a goat or a tear, they are children of God. Okay. And even though they may seem to do evil all the time, they're under the blood and all of that evil is paid for. And God will draw them to himself at some point when in his own timing. Um, in verse 11, the rich man is wise in his own conceit. See, in this world, money can buy you anything, pretty much. I mean, you know, it can't buy you, as sometimes it can buy you good medical care, although it can't buy you good health. But money talks in this world. And if you have money, you can pretty much get or do whatever you want. It says the rich man is wise in his own conceit. He feels powerful. He feels strong because his money can do anything he wants. But the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. So the poor that hath understanding can see how this works, how this works. Rich man is wise in his own conceit. Now he thinks he's really wise, but the poor can actually, it says the poor hath understanding that hath understanding searcheth him out. So the poor can see that he has no, that the rich man has no understanding. In verse 12, when righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Hmm. When the, well, let's look at that again. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. When the wicked rise, man becomes very minimal in the equation. In verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. If you cover your sins, you're not going to get anywhere. Okay? What you have to do is be willing to own your sins. Even though Jesus died for you, okay? But you're not going to learn anything, uh, and God is not going to take you to the next level of understanding unless you own those sins. And have learned from the experience of those sins. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Now God comes before, I mean, we come before God. And if you're, if you have a conscience issue. Confession and forsaking your sins will clear that conscience issue up from 1 John 1, 9. Whosoever confesseth his sins, God is faithful and just to forgive him those sins and to cleanse him from all unrighteousness. That's a conscience issue. We know that we are not forgiven because we confess or forsake our sins. That is not how we are forgiven. That is not how our salvation is obtained. We are born with the temple of God inside us. Jesus died for his own. First breath to last breath. You're covered. Okay. Perfect sin coverage. But that doesn't mean that you understand that. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel like you want to kind of hide in a corner if you have been taken through some certain kinds of sin. Okay. Um, it says he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. 
if you deny that you have any sin and you just cover them up, you don't even think about them, you're not going to prosper spiritually. You're not going to grow. You're not going to learn. But whoso confesseth the sins and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Confessing our sins one to another, not to a priest. Don't confess your sins to a priest. We confess our sins to God in prayer, just to him. But there are situations where God will put someone in your path who, if you share your sin experience and basically confessing to them what you've done, be, uh, it as a means to be helpful to that other person, kind of like, I understand, been there, done that kind of thing, um, been in the same s or a similar situation. Um, if you confess and forsake them, you're turning away from them, but confessing them to the brethren, confessing them to God, that you'll have mercy because you're helping. God is using your experience to help someone else in that kind of situation. Forget confessing to a priest. You don't have to confess to a priest. There's not anything in here that says you have to. You confess your sins to God. You don't have to go and tell everybody what you did. You don't, unless you're a servant of God full time. <laughs> Someone in my position, I have to tell people the stupid, ridiculous, dumb things that I do. And that keeps you being in responsible like that. It does keep you from stepping out of line um, as often. You know, it doesn't mean it won't stop you completely. <laughs> But having to tell the world uh, what you what stupid things you did, it does give you some kind of a. Uh, um, it makes you think twice, <laughs> ways about doing stupid things, and God will uh, cut you a break. He will show you mercy, you know, in these situations. Let me look and see. Okay. Um. <laughs> Let's keep going. In verse 14, happy is the man that feareth alway, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. So let's look at that one. Happy is the man that feareth alway. Have a healthy fear of the Lord your God. Okay? Do not choose to go into sin, if that makes any sense. Now, I, I teach that everything is written, but in our hearts, there are times like we know that we end up leaning towards sin and we're like, why did we do that? Why did, what was I thinking? Kind of thing. So he's saying, happy is the man that feareth alway. It's, you're going to be, a, <laughs> you're going to be happy in life. If you will walk with the king on a daily basis and you'll obey his word and avoid the snares of sin that come into our paths daily. But he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. If you harden your heart toward following the Lord, learning his word and walking with him on a daily basis and you're like, eh, well, I don't want to do that. And you just kind of harden your heart to following him every day. It says you will fall into mischief. And that's the last thing you want. You do not want to fall into mischief. Reekage. In verse 15, as a roaring lion and a ranging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. When you have a wicked ruler, the poor are the ones who suffer. In verse 16, the prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor, okay? The prince that wanteth understanding. These are spiritual princes, remember, over these territories. The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor. But he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. You want to avoid a love of money. Love, it's not money that's the root of all evil. It is the love of money that is the root of all evil. 
you don't want to um, love the wrong things. You know what I mean? And if you if you hate covetousness and and you're following the word, it will actually extend your life longer than you would have been otherwise. In verse 17, a man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. Let no man stay him. So if you do violence to the blood of any person, like Cain did to Abel, okay, shall flee to the pit. That means you are, uh, the minute you walk off, boom, you're going to be in a snare. You're going to end up going to jail. God is going to see to it uh, that you get what's coming to you in those kind of situations, even if you're a child of God and find yourself doing violence to the blood of another. Um, Jesus died for you, but it is, um, many are led into situations of great evil where they are ensnared and taken captive. And this says, let no man stay him. So that's saying, a man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. Let no man stay him. So if someone commits murder, violence to the blood of another person, um, that means their path is going in a bad direction toward the pit, a snare, prison, whatever. This is saying, let no man stay him. That's saying, don't interfere with the law or with God dealing with that person. You don't cover them. You don't jump in there and subvert justice on their behalf. On verse 18, whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. Now, how are you saved? Are you saved by walking uprightly? No, you're not. It's very important not to take scripture out of context, okay? Now it says, whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. But that's we know that's not how we're saved because we have our firm foundation, which is Christ and his shed blood for us. That is the only thing that can save you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ applied to our lives. Now, so he says, whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. So what this is talking about, if you kind of reverse engineer it, it's saying that only those who are saved are able to walk uprightly. Okay. But he that is perverse in his ways shall fall at once. Now, remember, we looked up the word perverse. That's a stubborn desire to do things that are unacceptable irregardless of the consequences. In verse 19, he that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. If you're getting out there and working, you're going to eat. But he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. If you're following after someone who's all talk and no walk, uh, you're going to you're going to stay in poverty or end up in poverty if you listen to them. In verse 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. And what this is saying, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Are you faithful? What fa you say, well, faithful to what? Faithful to God, faithful to your spouse, faithful to your employer, faithful to your friends and neighbors, faithful to the law, faithful to the word. Okay. If you do these things, you'll abound with blessings. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. You know why it's saying that? There's a lot of, have you ever heard the term, a get rich quick scheme? It's always a situation where someone else is ripped off to get them rich quick. 
they have to do something dishonest or unethical to get rich quick. They have to either uh, lie to people, deceive people. Um, those that haste to be rich shall not be innocent. In verse 21, to have respect of persons is not good. That means that you are um, respecting someone more for being rich than for being poor. We're gonna cut. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna pick up here at verse 21.